Welcome to Reykjavik Greipan's newscast. Uh, my name is, of course, Valur Grettisson. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Greipan. And I, we can have a talk in here, so I just brought the kid, mostly because it's, uh, uh, there are parent meetings in the school, so we have to <laughs> be, hope, be, take our kids to school today. But we're here at uh, a wonderful place called the Reykjavik Maritime Museum, and I, I absolutely love this place. Uh, but before we start, uh, remember, of course, our High Five Club uh, and also our online shop. But I'm going to tell you the news. Uh, we're doing pretty good when it comes to COVID, but there are, there are tragic news also. A lot of avalanches. Uh, and I'm also going to show you a little bit uh, around the museum, which is, I think, really fun, both for kids as an adult. So here we go. So, this building here used to be like filled with uh, fish workers and uh, uh, and just yeah, just packing in, packing fish and, and and taking it from the ships outside. So this was of course not always a museum, but also like all of this harbor area was more or less just an industry for the fishing the fi for the fishing industry. But this has changed quite rapidly past uh, decades. Uh, for, for many reasons, but uh, they're basically in, in, in other places. But when it comes to news, uh, we, had, we had four COVID uh, positive yesterday, which is, it feels like we, we, we can't uh, like, uh, get, get, uh, get this away <laughs> completely. I don't know why, but, uh, but we always have now zero to four cases. Uh, we haven't even had five. I think four is the, the, four is the highest. Uh, so it means, though, that we're doing really, really well. So well that uh, uh, we have basically not barricaded our borders, but we are very focused on the borders because the numbers there are, are consider considerably higher than the others. Uh, mostly because, of course, as you have noticed in your own home country, there are a lot of, uh, lot of uh, COVID cases coming up. And now we have not only the, the English one, like the English strain, we have the, new, like the, the, the South African one, and so on. It's like, it is what it is. Uh, what we have been discussing the last days is uh, the vaccine. Uh, we're not getting much. Uh, we, we were supposed to get 30, 75 doses, I think, but there are more around uh, for 30,000 people now. Uh, but the, the thing is that uh, this is happening, of course, in all Europe. Uh, we're as a e e e because of our EEA agreement, it means that we did deals through the EU, which means that we are in the same situation as the Netherlands, uh, Germany, and France, and so on. And you saw the news, of course. I mean, it was in, it was everywhere about the, the EU. They are quite pissed because AstraZeneca mostly is. I mean, they don't say it, like they don't say it out loud, but it feels like. AstraZeneca is, is selling other countries the, the doses that we should be getting, uh, and, and the EU is threatening, of course, to uh, like ban them to uh, import, like send the, send the doses out of the, the EU, which is quite drastic, to be honest. Uh, also, uh, uh, yeah, but this means that I mean. If everything goes uh, according to the plan, which we, <clears throat> we have no idea if it's going to happen, it means that we can uh, vaccine around 30,000 people in February. Uh, and that means that we have uh, vaccinated, like, hey, it means that we have vaccinated 10% uh, of, the, of the nation. Are we allowed to open this, or do you want? Yeah? Can we check out the video game? Yes. <laughs> This is fish jerky. This is basically uh, hard fish good, or hard fish. <laughs> uh, I love this, actually. It doesn't smell good, but it's like, it's, it's chewy and it's good for your teeth. Uh, and kids love this, as, as well as dogs, to be honest. <laughs> Wanna try it? <laughs> you don't like it? This is, of course, available in our stores. You want some, Art? Art loves it. It's hardcore. That's disgusting. 
Hmm. Oh, I'm just gonna steal this. Anyways, on to the news. Can you get it up? Mm -hmm. So, uh, past uh, two weeks, well, in 10 days, we had 90 avalanches uh, all around the Iceland. Uh, and I repeat that, avalanches, uh, you, you understand me. All right, the snow coming from the mountains. Uh, and this means that uh, there were like a, a high, high risk areas in Iceland. Uh, of course, in, like in the, mostly in the west of Iceland, like in West uh, Firðir. And among them, those places was, of course, Flatir. And they had some avalanches there, but luckily they were not that bad that they went uh, at any houses or anything. Uh, this happened also a year ago. Uh, this happens basically every year, of course, because we are, of course, we have a lot of mountains in Iceland and a lot of snow. So this is kind of what happens when we have, uh, have that situation. Wow. Look at that. I love this exhibition. This is, of course, the cod, the fish here. This is basically the fish that makes us quite rich as a nation. We sell this to uh, all, all countries, well, a lot, of, like, a lot of countries in the world, but mostly the UK. Uh, and you can see it's, it's actually huge. I think this is the, the real size of it. It's like some of it. It, it can, of course, be quite small, but, uh, but it's beautiful and it's, it's very tasty. So I always go for the fish at the restaurants in Iceland, at least. And also, these are the fishes that live here. And you can see how like, ugly the, the sharks are. And the sharks here, like in, in Iceland, as well as, the, as the, like, the Greenlandic shark, which lives in, in Iceland, they can be so old that I think the, the oldest one that they found was around four or 450 years old. That means that he was still swimming around like when, when I don't know, like when the French Revolution was, which is quite unique. Anyways, uh, avalanches. We have a lot of them, but nobody got hurt. Thank God. Wow. Huh. I think we will wait. We're going to see a, a whale somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, talking about the theft, uh, this is actually a tragic story. It was a 31-year-old man uh, that drowned uh, in the swimming pool downtown Reykjavik. A lot of you, of course, uh, that have visited Iceland before have come to the swimming pool. It's like the, the smack middle of downtown. And it means that uh, uh, he was like 31 years old. He was at work. Uh, and the, the thing is that nobody really knows what happened, but he, they found him unconscious on the bottom, on, in the deep end of the pool inside. Uh, after he had laid there for six minutes. And it doesn't need to be smart to, find, to figure out that six minutes without oxygen, uh, we're probably gonna die. Uh, nobody knows, uh, the police is uh, investigating the thing. The police is investigating the thing. Uh, but, the, but there have been like uh, odd statements. The police said that uh, they thought that this was because he was sick, but his father uh, came out publicly and said there was nothing wrong with this boy. Uh, he was very healthy and he was like all, all everybody in Iceland. We, we can swim very well. We, we learned this from six years old. <clears throat> and we are, you can't find an Icelander that cannot swim, basically. So this is truly odd, but they are guessing that this was because of, uh, I mean, there are a lot of things that can happen, of course, but uh, the most concerning thing, Peter, the most concerning thing is that there were two people working at the, the pool at the time, uh, and they didn't notice uh, anything at all, which is, of course, also tragic for them in a way, because I, I believe that those people want to do their best. So they are kind of taking the heat right now. But, uh, oh. so. Uh, so that's the situation right now. We have a lot of avalanches. COVID is under uh, control. 
Uh, this museum is still one of the, the best museums I've been to for the longest time. I'm really glad that we went there. <laughs> what, what's with the face? Perhaps somebody can explain this to me in the comment section. <laughs> it must be a, everything when it comes to, to the ocean in Iceland is, is very, very practical. And I love that. My father, for example, he was a sailor. Uh, and everybody, if, if you go to Iceland and you meet any Icelander, he always knows someone that was, used to be a sailor. Uh, if not his father, then an uncle or a friend or whatever. Also, I'm from Hapnafjörður, which is like, a, it used to be a huge town when it came to uh, fishing, the fishing industry. It's not anymore. But yeah, my father was a sailor for 20 years until my mother basically told him that uh, she didn't want him to be on sea because it's, it used to be really dangerous. It's not anymore though. Uh, his brother, my father's brother, he actually died in, uh, at, at sea. Uh, he was just on, on the deck of the ship when a, a wave crashed and swept him off and they never found him. So uh, it, it's obviously that's something that were, was like considered as like, our, our sailors were considered as like heroes and they were celebrated as heroes. And we have this one day every year when we go and celebrate all the sailors in Iceland. Here you can see harfiskur, the, the thing that we were eating, this is the same thing. I keep, <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> So the ocean have always been at least close to me, and I think it's close to everyone. And I felt this also, like when I was uh, traveling around, uh, I was like 20 years old, and I was traveling around Europe, uh, and, and a lot of it was like in Central Europe. And I was there for a month or two, and I could feel it immediately, like there was no ocean, uh, and it was really uncomfortable for me. And it means that we are so, we grew up, we grow up so close to the ocean and to this environment that we can really feel it in our bones when, when, when we're not with the ocean around us. And we feel it a little bit uncomfortable uh, at first. And I think all Icelanders can uh, test, uh, tell the same story. It's like, it's odd not to have the sea around you. But me, myself, I've never been a sailor at least. Uh, I often went with my father like, uh, to the ship, it was like a, a huge uh, fishing vessel. Uh, and I, I remember I fell and like I, I, I uh, hurt myself and the head got blood and everything. Uh, but uh, I was never like a rough uh, sailor type, <laughs> if you will. More like a artistic writer and a, and a journalist. But the saddest thing is that uh, machines are of course uh, they are taking over in so many ways. So we have fewer sailors uh, and, and these days, like this day that we, when we celebrate the ocean uh, and the, our sailors, um, uh, which is always in June, uh, it, it's always becoming smaller and smaller. And, and I don't know, it, it could be more. I, I, like, I like these days. Yeah, yeah my kid want to play a video game. Should we check it out? Video game, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's a competition. No, don't do it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. What should I do? You have to eat the other fish and then yeah. Ah. Fish. Hey. Don't eat that fish. Why not? Oh. No. Oh, plastic? What happens? No, don't eat that. Only eat plastic. A lot of plastic. <laughs> eat this. Yes. Me. So I only, <coughs> only eat the uh, small ones. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then you get bigger, then eat the other ones. 
Mmm, so I get bigger as I eat more. Yeah. That's practical. So, well, so that's it for us. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, me and, and, and Italy, we're going to stay here for a while and <laughs> play video games. Uh, remember, of course, like I said, our online shop, you can buy the fish jerky and, uh, and a lot of uh, like fish-related stuff also, and just Icelandic stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, just again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. I'm so gonna win you here. I'm getting quite big. Hey, I became a, sh uh, a shrimp. <laughs>